Hi, I'm Michelle from Michelle's Romantic Tangle, and it's late October. The month has just sped past. I did get the Halloween quilts hung that I talked about in my last video. Those are both patterns that I designed, and they're both free on my blog, so I will put links in the description if any of you are quilters and want to play around with those. I really have not been doing nearly enough stitching or quilting... I haven't been myself this month, guys. If you look at my project tracker, this is September, and that's pretty typical of what I do. That's October. The box is where we spent a week at my parents' timeshare at the coast, and the rest of it is just... I haven't been picking anything up. I haven't started a new shawl since the last video when I showed you my finished one. I haven't started the Hedgehog Sal or Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow or anything. And it's not... I haven't lost my mojo. There's nothing wrong. I just don't want to. And as long as it doesn't go on for too long, that's fine. I mean, as many hours a day as I usually spend knitting, it is probably a good idea to give my hands a break. I had all of these ambitious plans for Halloween stuff that I wanted to finish, and I had it figured out so I could get a bunch of stuff done, and yeah, that didn't happen. I did get the Grady twins done. I love these two. I want to find them a little ornate frame, and then if I ever get my gallery wall done with all my old houses, they're going to hide in the middle somewhere. The pattern, the way it was written, did have kind of an outline of the elevator behind them, but... As much as I like the girls, I didn't like the elevator. It didn't look realistic, so I left it out. And I can do that. It's my project. I also finished the round skull that I showed you in the last video. This was a really quick, quicker than it looked like it would be. I think I got it done in two or three evenings. That's a free pattern from skulladay.com. I will put the link to it in the description. And then while we were over at the coast, I did this little black cat. Her, it is supposed to be a black cat on white fabric, but I found the gray fabric lurking in my stash and decided that I wanted white letters on a gray cat. And once again, it's my project. I can do that. I do owe my sons an apology after my last video where I was not properly sympathetic of their teenage boy colds. They gave it to me, and it might not have been quite as bad as they said it was, but it wasn't fun. I have not been shopping this for stash at all lately. I do have a couple of little additions. If you watch Audrey Stitchy Witch 42 in her most recent video, she talks about the witch's brew floss that she dyed, and I am one of the lucky stitchers she sent some to. I am, I got plans for this. I am just tickled, and it is gorgeous. One of the things that I wanted to cram into this month was the Philomath Artists Open Studio. I don't remember exactly what its formal name is. But a bunch of local artists do a studio tour and open their studios to the public. On Sunday, the boys and I drove out there, and I think we made 10 of the 15 stops. It was really fun. If you like watching, like, sewing room tours and stuff, and there's one of these in your area, go. Because it's neat to see the spaces that people work in. We talked to a guy who does metal sculptures out of found objects and learned about titanium splash. We learned about pottery. We learned about pastels. The boys were full of questions and the artists were very welcoming. And I bought a thing. One of the artists we saw was selling these glazed ceramic pieces and she was selling them as fridge magnets or scarf jewelry. But they're needle minders. I need, there were a couple of other artists who had magnets that I was tempted by, but I wasn't sure if the magnets would be strong enough to hold the needle through it. So I'm going to start next weekend. We go out to see the 
studios we missed on our first trip, and I'm going to carry a needle in my purse so I can find myself more fun needle minders. The artist who made these is Debbie Lynn Friedlander, and I will post a link to her Facebook page in the description in case you want to look her up. We went to an estate sale, my husband and I. I sort of kind of almost bought a truck, if you saw in my Instagram post. And when I was sort of kind of almost buying the truck on Sunday, they had, Saturday had been half price, Sunday they were bundling things. And bundling things is a great concept. I love it, except when you're shopping with kids who want weird, random stuff it gets more difficult because I can take my stack of stuff and say, yes, I'm happy paying eight bucks for this. But I also want to know how much I'm paying for the projection screen and whatever weird stuff they want. I really, for as huge as this estate sale was, I didn't bring home much at all. I think I spent $7 total on my stuff and their stuff. It was a mid-century ranch style house on a farm which is different than a farmhouse and it had 60 years of accumulation and it just it was one of those estate sales where you are happy that they had the life that they had because it was fun I don't think there was a sewing machine there. There was a very little bit of fabric that, I, I don't know, but one of the things I saw on the first day in a back bedroom was this. I love vintage cruel. You know I love vintage cruel. I'd rather stitch it myself, but this is totally the subject matter that I love, and it's pretty. And on Sunday it was, well, half price was $2.50, and then it was whatever they had marked it down to bundle. So I picked it up and I carried it around with me. Out on the enclosed front porch, I found these four frames hooked together with a rubber band with a price $3 for the set. I hadn't seen these on Friday, and I hadn't seen these on Saturday. I don't know. Someone must have moved them from somewhere else and set them down. I don't know. These are needlepoint. <clears throat> look at the details. Look at the spider web in that window. I didn't even look at the rest of them. I just bought it because it was less than $1.50 for the four. There is a pie in a window and a milk can and an antique store and... These are just, I love these. I would rather have the kits and be able to stitch them myself because that's the way my mind works. But since the only way that I get these old cruel kits is if I find them dirt cheap at an estate sale or a thrift store, odds of my finding them are slim. If I find them, odds of my stitching them are maybe not so great. So... I'm going to have these and I'm going to be happy with them and if somehow a miracle happens and I find the kit and I stitch them myself then I'll pass those on to someone else because that could happen. I did start a new pair of socks. This is That little alphabet cat and these socks are about all I've done for the month of October. And like I said there's no explanation, there's no reason. It's just how the month has worked. Amy at Amy Deville and I are starting a new stitch along on November 15th. I love Dimensions Gold Collection. I have got so many of these kits. And as much as I love them, I'm kind of afraid of them because they're ambitious. There are a lot of. I hate the glare. I'm fighting glare this entire video. I love them. And I know that Amy stitches them too, so I got in touch with her and asked what she thought about doing a sal together. So we are starting the Divine Dimension sal. We are starting November 15th. 
I'm going to go through my collection of kits because that gives me an excuse to go through my collection of kits. I'm pretty sure that Southwest Mesa is what I will be stitching. I had to print the picture off the internet because the original picture from the kit and the original fabric from the kit is long gone. The first year I decided that I wanted to start cross-stitching, I asked my husband for a, well, I wanted to start needlepoint. And I asked him for a needlepoint kit for Christmas, and he bought me a cross-stitch kit because men. And I started it. I started in the middle. I got a little bit of the building done, and I thoroughly messed it up, and then I learned about gritting fabric, and I never picked it up again. And I found the chart in my stash when I was pulling everything out last winter, and I'm going to stitch it. I want to stitch it. I also have another kit that I found at a thrift store called All is Calm. I'll insert a picture of that because I don't have the outside packaging. When I found this one, I did not know what I was buying. Someone had do donated a ton of cross-stitch kits to the thrift store, and all that was there was the Ziploc bag that comes inside of the package. The exterior packaging was gone. It was two dollars, but I could, looking at the chart, I could see trees, and I know that I love landscapes, so I bought it because it had trees. And I got it home and pulled out the chart and Googled the chart name and fell in love. So my project for the sale, I am pretty sure, will be one or the other, or more likely both. But that'll be fun. I need... My hands are rested, my eyes are rested. It is time to plunge into a new project that is a little more complicated than the socks. Thank you so much for watching. I had all these plans for Halloween that are not going to happen before Halloween, I don't think. I had a cute Halloween shirt to wear for this video, but I put it somewhere and can't remember where. And I have been procrastinating on this video like you would not believe. I had everything all together and then it's, I'll do it tomorrow night. I'll do it tomorrow night. And I originally set out to do this on October 5th. I've added a lot of stuff since then, and it's a longer, probably better video than it would have been if I'd done it then. But like I said, thank you for watching. I am hoping the next video won't be a month from now. I'll see you soon.